this little box, this little seven pound amplifier has given me so many OMG moments in the past couple of weeks. It's stately, it's smart, it's a little stealthy. You know what? It's kind of like the James Bond of amplifiers. I'll explain. Hi, I'm Bob, and you, my friends, are back in the United States of Analog. Welcome. Welcome. You are a citizen of our great audiophile nation with all of the rights implied, including voting. You can go down and, and like this video. You can hit the notification bell. You can subscribe to the channel. So important to help this channel grow so I can keep coming to you from beautiful Austin, Texas, USA. And speaking of that, where are you from? Besides commenting on what we're going to show you today, the Lingdorf TDAI 1120 all digital amplifier. I know, don't jump on me right now. You'll have your chance. <laughs> all digital amplifier. Let me know where you're from so I can drop a pin. And uh, a special shout out to my one subscriber in Tasmania. I didn't even know it was a place. I thought it was just a place in a cartoon. No, it's a, it's a real place and I have one sub there. Where are you from? Put it in the comments below and let me know what you think about this little amp. Now, let me thank Origin Hi-Fi in Austin, Texas for loaning me this Lindor so I can evaluate it. This is not a sponsorship. I'm going to give you the straight skinny from my perspective, all right? My observations, my auditioning. That's what's happening today. Now, let's get down to business, all right? With the Lingdorf TDAI 1120 60 watt all digital amplifier. All right, as usual, we'll look at the features and the form factor. Then I'll show you some more pictures of the Lingdorf. We'll also, also dive into the setup a little bit because it's very important here. The setup is going to be crucial to getting the best sound for you in your home. We'll do some sound comparisons with other amplifiers I have in-house. Then we'll hook up various speakers. We'll analyze it. We'll talk about it. Then we'll determine if it's right for you or if it's right for me. I can already tell you, spoiler alert, I think it's right for me. It's one of the best things I've heard in the last few months. Now, addressing the elephant in the room. I know this is an all digital product. And I know that the name of the channel is the United States of Analog. I thought it was cool to name it that. I thought it was much cooler than the United States of Audio. <laughs> but in my defense, I do a lot of analog reviewing and I am also going to connect a turntable to this. So hate me below, put it in the comments, but it's all part of the wonderful world of analog and audio and digital. And, and truth be known, it looks like we're moving more in a digital direction every day with the audio scene. Uh, a lot of amplifiers now are Class D. This is not technically Class D, it's all digital, but we're moving in that direction. It's more cost effective. It's more efficient. You can get a smaller footprint. Just like the Cybertruck is going to revolutionize automobiles, digital products, digital amplifiers particularly, they're not going anywhere. And they're going to keep sounding better and better and better. And speaking of better, this is the Lingdorf. Yeah, it's smallish. It's 7.3 pounds. It's dimension in inches, 3.98. Let's call it 4 inches tall. Let's call it just under 12 inches wide and just over 10 inches. Actually, 10.3 inches deep. And that includes the binding posts. It lists for 24 hundred dollars. It's designed and manufactured in Denmark and that implies a certain amount of quality as does the parental name of Lingdorf, Steinway. That's right, the piano people. Steinway prides themselves in producing components that are lifelike in their sound, that can accurately reproduce not only the sound of pianos but the sound of other instruments in a concert environment. And I'm not talking about arena concerts because that sound is usually hot trash, but I'm talking about a quality concert experience. The 1120 is 60 watts per channel at 8 ohm, all digital. On the front, we have a source mute button. There's the volume control, which has LEDs that light up as you turn the dial around, and a standby button. On the back, we have some rather nice 
binding posts. Interesting that they're not mirror image. Most amplifiers have mirror image binding posts, so be careful when you hook these up to keep the phase right. We have a phono input. We have an analog input, RCA single-ended, a microphone XLR input for that calibration I spoke of. In the digital domain, we have two coaxial inputs and two optical inputs. There's a USB slot for playing music from a drive. There's also a LAN connection, an HDMI eARC, and some trigger connections. You won't find a handheld remote in the box. All controlling is done through the remote control app that you can put on your smart device. It works very well. You can buy uh, separately a handheld remote and if I was to keep this amp, I think that's something that I would do for convenience. Inside, though, there are a couple special things. First and foremost, it's a streaming amp. It's going to satisfy most of your streaming needs. It's Rune ready. It's got Spotify Connect Title, Connect AirPlay 2, Chromecast is built in. There's a VTuner for internet radio if you do that. Files via USB can be played. There's DNLA, UPnP support, and Bluetooth. But the secret sauce in here, the second thing, is the proprietary Room Perfect, Room Calibration, or Room Correction, whatever you want to call it, it's inside. It's one of the most significant features of this small but mighty unit. All right, now it's time for the setup. And setup with the 1120 is super easy, super intuitive, but you're gonna wanna download the Lingdorf Remote Control app. Straight away, don't waste any time doing that. You're gonna need it. Everything's in there. Again, intuitive, easy to understand, but there are many layers, and that's kind of the beginning of this journey. The next thing you want to do is connect to the internet. Again, very easy to do. I use LAN. You can use wireless. Then you can start plugging in your devices. And there's not a lot of real estate back there. I want to warn you, the back of this unit's pretty tight. So a lot of those connections are tight. If you've got big sausage fingers, uh, you're, you're going to be, well, you're not going to be challenged, but you know, it, it's, you're going to notice that things are pretty tight back there. Try to get everything connected before you, you push it into your cabinet. Better yet, this thing is so stately, so beautiful, you're going to want it on top of the cabinet. You're going to want it on top of the low boy. You're going to want to see it in plain sight uh, because this is really a beautiful unit. Now it's time to do the Room Perfect Room Correction. And that's what they call it. And I've used Room Correction and Room Calibration interchangeably. And both of those are kind of a misnomer in a way because you're not correcting the room at all. The room is the room. You may have treatment in there, you may have soft furniture that's, that's doing some of the correcting, but the room is the room. And so I would say what you're doing is correcting for the room. But Room Perfect calls it patented Room Perfect Room Correction. All right, so I was right when I said room correction. In the hype, it says it delivers the perfect musical experience in all living rooms without the need for extensive acoustic treatment. So you get an a sound system with optimal frequency response, seamless level alignment and bass management, and integrates your, your sub and your speakers perfectly. So that, that's kind of a paraphrase of their... Oh look, I have the official letterhead. <laughs> so I won't go into all the details of how to do the room correction. Again, it's pretty self-explanatory. I will tell you for the first time, allow yourself 30 minutes to an hour to get it right, because you got to get the stand up, the mic up, you've got to connect the, the cable, and every room correction will take you about 20 minutes. So you have to do that every time you, you swap out speakers. And when you're reviewing stuff and putting speakers in and out, I must have done this about a half a dozen times in the last two weeks. So uh, give yourself some time to do it and do it right. You place your microphone initially in a position they call focus. That's where you listen. That's center position. I listen to music alone. I know, that's kind of sad, right? But yeah, that's the that listening position. That's center position with the equilateral triangle and all that. That's your that's your uh, focus position. And then throughout the calibration or the or the correction, excuse me, I did it again. You're you're placing that microphone in any random position. You do it about 5 or 6 times. Just putting the microphone somewhere in your room, pointing up, pointing down, in a corner, different listening positions. It's your choice. And magically, the room correction takes place. Now, I'm not going to get to the results of the room correction just quite yet. We're going to save that. But that, that's pretty much it. That's the setup in a nutshell. Easy, intuitive. Now the moment we've all been waiting for, 
the sound. Let's talk about the sound of the 1120. For my evaluation, I compared it to the NADC 3050 and the Techniques SUG700, which I both own. And a couple of months ago, I had a name, Unity Adam, in here, and it's probably appropriate to also compare it to that. Again, here in the United States of Analog, we don't get too technical. We listen not only with our ears, but we listen with our heart. So, you know, it all depends on whether I can make a musical, emotional connection to a piece of gear. And that's how we look at it. You're not gonna see charts and graphs here. There are places that you can go to see that, but we're not gonna do that here. The speakers I used were my beloved Klipsch Forte 4s, my LS50 Metas from Kef, and the recently reviewed, uh, what were they? <laughs> the, uh, the Heiko Aurora 300. So why did I refer to this amplifier as the James Bond of amplifiers? Well, because when I thought about it, this amp, like James Bond, is intelligent, it's sophisticated, and it's agile. Now, when I think of James Bond, I don't think a lot of muscle, you know? I don't think about, like, he's not the rock, right? but he's agile, he's quick. And all those things describe both this amp and, and, and James Bond. There's not a lot of muscle. It's 60 watts digital. And with the right speakers, and I do recommend high efficiency speakers for this, for this model. I'm not saying it's underpowered, it is not. Just connect it to the right speakers. And toward that end, I would say connect this amplifier to a speaker that is on the dark side of neutral, the darker side of neutral, just a little bit. This amp is extremely agile, delivers music with, with speed and precision. I can't emphasize that enough. So when I connected it to the LS50 Meta, say, too much detail for me. In fact, I was listening to Hotel California through the streamer. It was MQA. By the way, this amp does unfold MQA. I thought maybe Hotel California was not the audiophile juggernaut I once thought it was. I really started thinking that it sounded better on FM radio, because that's where I'd heard it for all these years. It revealed too many of the imperfections in that music, and I had to really take a second listen to that. Now, that, that record has been uh, remastered a million times and is in a different format, and maybe, you know, uh, it was an off day, and uh, the file, you know, the MQA file, the FLAC file I was listening to uh, wasn't optimum. But that's just a little cautionary tale for you. The the, the 1120 really was well suited to the Aurora and the Klipsch. Now the Aurora is not price appropriate. That's a $400 a pair speaker, but it has that soft dome, that paper woofer that leaned to the, you know, to the warm side of neutral. And the same with my Klipsch Fortes. You think a Klipsch Fortes with the horns and everything may be too bright, and it's, it's absolutely not, especially when, you know, when you're listening to mine that have got many, many hours of break-in time. Uh, it was just a beautiful experience. And speaking of beautiful experience, I cannot overemphasize how important and how amazing the Room Perfect calibration or correction is. It is phenomenal. When I first plugged in this amplifier and gave it an initial listen without the room correction, without room perfect, good, great, sounded fantastic. I was super, super impressed. Then I did the room calibration. I had the Fortes. I used the streamer. I used vinyl. I used SACD. Let me tell you what. The sound went from this to this. There, it expanded so wide the definition of the instruments, the placement of the, of the instruments in space was, was so phenomenal. I, I, I almost couldn't believe it because I'd never really used room correction before. I have Dirac in an Onkyo RZ50. You know, when you're dealing with 11 speakers, 10, 11 speakers in a home theater system, you know, it's hard to really tell what room correction is doing for you. At least my ears can't, you know, can't discern that. But with a 2.1 system, which I have, and I was using a sub subwoofer on occasion, wow, unbelievable. I will, I will never look at room correction the same way. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you that Room Perfect, which is a proprietary system from Peter Lingdorf himself, man, I, I can't tell you enough. It was not subtle. The other thing I wanted to caution you about a little bit 
is that I was initially disappointed when I plugged in my uh, MoFi Studio Deck turntable because I wasn't getting the punch in the music. And I think there was a volume difference between uh, the streaming and my SACDs and, and my turntable. But I just wasn't getting that impact and that punch that I love. I wasn't getting the volume. I, I feel like I was cranking the 1120 almost to a point of clipping. And I, I think I was. Then I dug deeper into the menu. I had to go a couple pages in to find where I could adjust the gain, the incoming sensitivity of the turntable. I added like 5 dB, 10 dB or something like that. I brought it up to the level of the streaming and man, it was a whole world of difference. I didn't have to turn the volume knob all the way up. I had that impact, that punch that I wanted out of my studio deck and my master tracker cartridge. It was phenomenal. So learn the app, dig in deep. There's a lot in there. There's tone controls. There's all kinds of EQs preset. I liked the focus position. That was my favorite because I listen alone. Uh, <laughs> and I also like the open setting. I don't know exactly what it means, but it sounded pretty good to my ear. So there's all kinds of adjustments, all kinds of selections that you can make to tailor the 1120 to your room, to your ears, to your life. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Again, get speakers on the warmer side of neutral, the darker side of neutral, I think it will reward you many times over. Also, don't forget to do the room perfect room correction. It is not a subtle difference. It will slap you in the face, <laughs> literally, with, uh, with your favorite music. So let's take the comparisons one by one. The techniques, SUG 700. Where are my notes? Digital. 70 times 2 into 8, $2,900. You know I love my Techniques. If you've listened to this channel more than five minutes, you know I love my Techniques amplifier. It's digital. This is the United States of Analog. I don't care. I love it. It's one of, the, it's one of my favorite things, as Oprah says. Doesn't have room correction, though. I can't imagine. I can't imagine what my techniques would sound like if it had room perfect in it. It never will because that's proprietary, but I can't imagine. And the techniques doesn't have a streamer. So you got $2,900 for the techniques. Great sound. Maybe a little more punch than the 1120. You know, a little more, you know, brawn, but not by much. Not by much. The NADC 3050. You know, I'm not a super fan of that. It does not have built-in streaming. It does not have room correction. It's class D 100 times two into eight. There are some similarities in the way it operates, the volume control and all that. But again, that's, uh, that's $1,400, about $1,000 less than what we're talking about with the 1120. So maybe not a fair comparison. The sound of the 1120 with room correction, better still. And then you've got the name Unity Atom. If I can remember it, $3,800, 40 times two into eight, a little beefier sound with the name Unity Atom. And you get that display. Here with the 1120, the display is very subdued. It's just showing you lights indicating your, your, your input selection. You know, with the name Unity Atom, you get the, the album art on there. I don't remember. I think it has maybe digital meters, or maybe I'm thinking of one of the other NAD digital products. But I don't know how that important it is when you're in your focus listening position. You can't really see the artwork from across the room. If you want that, set your phone next to the 1120. Now you got, a, now you got album art to, to look at. I'd, I'd rather have the album art in the, in the palm of my hand and all the controls. And speaking of controls, you know, the app is not perfect. It's close to perfect, but occasionally it would disconnect when I went back from title back to the app to, you know, title back to the app, or I was looking at email or whatever. Sometimes I would have to refresh the Lingdorf app, but that, that's a small inconvenience. Overall, I think you're going to love the Lingdorf Total Digital Amp 1120. I did. I don't want to let it go, but there are a few little nitpicks. That's, that's nitpicking, isn't it? Let me get my nitpick page out here. You're going to get different experiences with different speakers. So again, I've, I've overemphasized this, but go a little warmer, a little darker, then lighter and brighter. If 
if that's your preference. Maybe you want to hear all the mistakes in Hotel California. Inputs and outputs are set close together in the back. Nothing we can do about that. This is a, a small, sophisticated unit. Uh, you'll, you'll get through that. There's no art or playback information on the screen. Not to worry, it's in your hand. I wish it had a remote supply, to be honest with you, but that would drive the, that would drive the price up. And uh, again, the calibration, you're gonna have to be patient. It's gonna take you about 20 minutes every time you swap out some speakers. So, you know, get yourself, as Randy would say, a hot cup of coffee <laughs> and sit back and, and let it happen. And there are so many controls and adjustments in the app. I can't get to them all here. Please take your time to dig in to the Lingdorf app and, and set this thing up right, you will be rewarded in multitudes. This is a fantastic, fantastic unit. I'm glad I could bring it to you. I'm glad I could listen to it for a couple of weeks, but sadly it has to go back. So that's my look at the Lingdorf 1120. Listen, it's small, but it's feature packed. Like I said, it's, it's the James Bond of amplifiers. It'll sneak up on you. Uh, this really is a great product for just about anybody looking for a compact streaming amp. And I look forward to, to looking at more and listening to more Lingdorf stuff. I'd like to see how this connects and sounds with actual Lingdorf speakers. If you're listening, Lingdorf, I'm right here in the United States of Analog and so are you. We'll see you next time on the United States of Analog and don't forget to like and subscribe, all right? It means a lot to me. Dylan. Oh, Dylan. Hey, they haven't called yet, have they, to, to return this? No, no, no. Don't. No. I'll, I'll, just wait for them to call, all right? We'll, we'll just hang on to this for a few minutes.